Hi everyone, uh, this is actually the start of a series of videos um, that we're going to be walking through on Christian disciplines. Um, this is actually a series that we've been uh, working through uh, with our uh, youth group, uh, beloved students at our church, um, over the next 12 weeks as we walk through um, all these different uh, disciplines that we highlight um, on our church website here. And uh, just been getting some feedback and thought it would actually be really helpful to um, record some of these um, to give more information on to what each one of these uh, disciplines are and how we um, live it out in our lives. And so that's what this is going to be. Uh, just a quick introduction to Christian disciplines because it was actually something um, when I first became a pastor, I was actually asked the question, how are you in your habits of grace? And I was like, I have no idea what that is. And even when it was like eh, Christian disciplines, the things you do, I'm like, I do what do you mean? Like I read my Bible, right? Like, so actually to have it expanded to know there, there's actually multiple things that we as followers of Christ can participate in. Um, not that any of these things bring apart salvation. Salvation is absolutely by grace alone, God's work, his sovereign work in our lives. But these are things that as God changes us, that we live out and we can bear fruit and we can see his work in our lives um, increase. And so just looking at our church website here, um, these Christian disciplines uh, that are also uh, sometimes referred to as spiritual disciplines or habits of grace. Um, and I love habits of grace. It's a, um, because of grace, because of what we've received. These are habits that we should do. Um, so um, you'll hear me use those terms probably um, inter interchangeably throughout this. So these are the 12 um, habits that um, we have identified um, Matt, actually, Pastor Kevin uh, kind of went through um, when he was starting the church, and we were going to do these, came up with, put together 12 of them so that we could highlight one each month. And so Bible intake, prayer, confession, you can um, see them all here on the site. And so we'll actually kind of work through each one of these in a little more detail and actually go into some practical application on how we do these things and how we can live them out in our lives. So the first one we start off with is Bible intake, um, and fittingly so, uh, we, we need the Word of God in our lives um, as we grow in faith with Him. So let's um, jump into this here. I'm going to kind of have two screens, uh, usually when I'm doing some of these, um, just so I can kind of, we can walk through some different parts of this and uh, kind of be a little more interactive. Um, this is pretty much going to be how I taught teach it at, um, again, our, our student youth group as I'm teaching it there, um, bringing a lot of those same elements into this video uh, for those who couldn't make it and uh, want to watch it, um, or just for the benefit of our church as a whole. So just to read the, the um, uh, description of Bible intake, uh, the discipline of Bible intake is about the practice of hearing from and submitting to the revelation of God. God's word, the Bible, is infallible and inspired word that he breathed out and has been preserved for us to hear from him directly, to hear directly from him. He is not only our good creator, but he is also omniscient, which is all-knowing, omnipotent, which is all-powerful. So we listen to him and read scripture, knowing it is authoritative and life-giving for us as his beloved children. If you're curious more on um, a little more depth on the Bible itself, um, we do have our uh, doctrine course uh, video, which um, I'll link in the, probably in the video here somewhere. Uh, you could click on and actually kind of see a little bit longer explanation of how we got the Bible and things like that. Um, but for these, they're not going to be so much on um, the doctrine side of things. They're going to be more on the application of how do we take the knowledge that we have? How do we take this and how do we actually um, work it out in our lives? So as we talk about reading the Bible, in essence, that's what it is. Pick up your Bible and read it. But what's helpful in this is, well, how do we read our Bible? And so that's what I want to walk into in this video here is helping us work through that. So an acronym, if you like those and uh, if that's helpful for you, is SOAP. Um, and so that's going to stand for our four words that we're going to be walking through here. Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. S-O-A-P. If that's helpful for you, great. Um, if not, you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to memorize it that way. Um, but these are the four things that we want to walk through as we read through Scripture. And so the first part, Scripture, is read the passage of Scripture, consider what you are reading, and make notes of any words or phrases that stand out. 
see if any other Bible verses are also being referenced in the passage. So this is kind of the initial intake of you're reading through it. Consider what you're reading. And as you're reading, make notes of words and phrases that stand out to you. And so that's actually what we're going to do here in application with this passage that you see on the bottom half here. Now we're going to walk through these four steps and then we're actually going to walk through that in this passage. So the second thing you'd want to do after you've read through the passage and, and you've um, um, just kind of made some notes and on those things is observation. So um, maybe it's reading through it again um, or just kind of pausing and looking back at it and saying, well, what stood out to you? Like, what was something in the passage that, you know, like, that's interesting. I, I want to dig into that more. Or this was something that was um, really impactful. Um, consider who wrote or spoke this. So we need to then kind of dig into, like, these things stood out. But but who's writing this? Is it, um, who's the author? Who's speaking it in the text? Is it Jesus speaking? Is it a, one of the apostles? Is it somebody who's writing it? What's that context of it? Who are they writing it to? So that we know the context of who are they speaking to in the passage? And then considering those things, determining what the original purpose of what the author is trying to make. And then the third piece would be the application. So how does this passage then apply to your life? So in light of the, the original context and knowing and understanding what it's saying, then we, we make it personal. We go, okay, how, what is this speaking to me in my life? My, my brain is learning as I read scripture and, and my heart is, is needing to be impacted by this changed way of seeing things and so that it can live out. Um, so what are the commands, the promises, um, the encouragements that are there that are going to help um, change us so that as we live out our life, we are living out our life according to what the scripture is showing us. How does it change our heart and mind, the way that you see Jesus and the gospel? And I think this is a critical thing um, through all of this is seeing our heart and our mind, um, you know, both together are, are so important. Our mind to learn and understand and our heart to change how we live and how we feel. Um, one without the other doesn't work. Um, if, you, if you just focus so much on the mind and the knowledge and it goes nowhere, it's not helpful. And if you just kind of live by your heart, and whatever feels right, you're never balancing it with the truth. Um, so both together, super important. And then lastly, prayer, just pouring out now uh, in light of what we've seen, um, we, we pray. and Or you could also say in this praise. Um, so we pray and ask God to forgive us. We repent. Um, as we read scripture, it should lead us to that. Um, prayer is actually going to be the second discipline that we talk through. And so it's fittingly that these two are kind of the two that probably a lot of people really commonly think about. And they do go hand in hand. And then we also just ask that God would continue to give us wisdom in that. And so we, we process through the scripture and then we respond to God in, um, in all of that as we pray uh, through uh, what he has taught us in his word. So that is the kind of overview of the discipline and a method on reading scripture. And so now I just want to jump into this passage here, John 15, 9 through 17. Now, this was a passage that we actually went through uh, a couple weeks ago at youth group, um, which is a beautiful passage here and actually one that we're going to use um, for our um, walking through here. So what we're going to do is read through the passage and make note of things that stand out to us. Um, and so if this is helpful, actually taking scripture and marking it in your Bible if you want or printing it out to where you can really work through it um, can be helpful. So John 15, verse 9 uh, through 17. As the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Remain in my love. And so I'm going to actually see already that we have loved. It's definitely going to be something standing out here, at least in this first verse. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my command. Love one another. As I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. I have called you friends 
because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit, so that your fruit should remain. So whatever you ask in the Father in my name, he will give you. This is what I command you. Love one another. So we certainly see a, a commanding and a theme of love here. Something else I saw too is this word commands. Oops. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept the Father's commands. This is my command. Sorry, get, get the keyboard out of the way here. <laughs> this is my command. No one has greater love to you than this to lay down his life for my friends. If you do, if you are my friends, you are my friends if you do what I command. And then this is what I command you. So something else is standing out here. There, there's action, and this is where we continue to see the layers that build on this. If you keep my commands as I have kept, my father's commands. So now, now this word father is in here a couple times as well. Father. Father. As I have kept commands. So now we see this connection of Jesus saying he's asking us something that he has done. All related back to the father. If you keep my commands, you will remain in love. And we know, we can look down here, what is, what is the command? This is this is the whole ending here. This is what I command you, to love one another. So command is to love as he has loved. And who has he loved? He has loved you. As the Father has loved me. So Jesus. Jesus. Us. So as the Father has loved his Son, the Son has loved us remain in his love, and as he has loved us, we should love others. As he loved us, we should love others. And so this is how you can really get deep into the word, and what we're, what we're kind of seeing here is scripture and observation right now. We're kind of mixing the two in because we've read through it, but we're also starting to observe things in here. We also see this context of friend. No one has greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. So clearly Jesus talking about his work to be done on the cross. There is no greater love than this. You are my friends us if you do what I command and what's the command to love I've called you friends because I've made known to you everything that I have heard from my father father and I love being able to study um, this way Maybe it's not practical all the time, but doing this every so often really helps you see how much depth is in a passage. I apologize if I've missed anything here. <clears throat> uh, friends, you know, he does not call servants, but friends. And so we see this command of that. Now there's one more thing in here that I think is really important. Maybe two. Maybe two, because we have this verse here that really hasn't been addressed yet. It's verse 11. And then verse 16 is interesting. Because he's talking all this stuff, the command, love as I have loved you. And then he gets to 16. You did not choose me. You did not choose me. But I chose you 
I appointed you to what? Produce fruit that your fruit should remain, remain, remain in the choosing. So that whatever I ask, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. So there's also a connotation of prayer here, um, which we'll get more into next week. But what's important here, I think, to realize is if you read this without the proper context of what Jesus is telling us here, you might see this and go, I need to love others before Jesus will love me. <laughs> right? If you keep my command, <clears throat> you will remain in my love. This is my command, love one another as I have loved you. Remain in my love. This is what I command, love one another. And so there almost seems to be this, if you love, then I will love you. But that's not true. The love is sequential from the Father to us. As the Father, again, context of this, this whole statement here, as the Father has loved me, Christ, I also have loved you. So this love pouring down from the Godhead, God the Father, infinitely loving God the Son, three in one, one God, three persons, Father, Son, Spirit. As the Father has loved the Son, the Son has loved us. God has loved us. Remain in my love. You see this here? How do we remain in his love? Verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit that you should re that your fruit should remain. What is the fruit? I think in the context of this passage, one of the fruits is this outpouring of love, to love one another. And there is most certainly a calling here to produce fruit, a calling beyond to, to go and do um, many of the and showcase the fruits of the spirit and to go and serve on this mission for God. But as we remain in his love, we remain because he has chosen us. He has appointed us to go and do this. And so there's this, this paradox of, yes, obey his command because he has chosen you and he has loved you first. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This love first poured out by the Father. As the Father has loved, as God has loved, as Christ has loved us, he has chosen us as his people so that we will do good works, that we will produce fruit, that we will remain in him. And this is what I command you, to love one another. We, we love because we were first loved. And to me, that is kind of the bottom line here. We love because we were first loved. That's the only way we can truly love one another. If we just try to love one another in our own power, it's just going to be what the world already does. The world loves love and saying to love and be kind to each other. Like that's, that's a way of the world. So what makes Christian love different? Our love pours out from the Father who first loved us, who chose us and appointed us to work in producing fruit through this act of love. And then alone, last thing, we jump up to this verse 11. I've told you these things, these, these things, and I'm going to say that a bi-directional statement of these things, these things, so that your joy may be complete in you may be in you and your joy may be complete. So what's the beauty of all of this? Christ has loved us, we love others, and in all of that, our joy will be so complete and so filled. And so you can see how you can take some time here and work through a passage to really pull out some depth in it. And so as we look, we read through scripture, we make the observations, and then what's the application? In light of God's love for me that I did not deserve, how much can I love everyone around me? To be filled with God, his spirit, to, to know that he has loved me. And in light of that, I need to love those around me. 
And in doing that, my joy will be complete. So as I live my day today, live it in light of what God has done, his love for me, the love that then I will give to others. And in that, find joy, joy of my salvation, the joy of God saving me, his choosing of me, his appointing of me, the joy of following his commands. This is what I command you, love one another. And if we love one another, if you keep my commands, which is the love, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's command and remain in his love. So as we love each other, we are more fully embraced in Christ's love and God's love. It's beautiful. We, we can only love others because God has loved and is currently and actively pouring love into us so that we can love others. And as we participate in that fruit of loving others, we then more fully find ourselves abounding in his love that then pours back out. And in that is fullness of joy. So that is our application. And then we pray. So would you pray with me? Lord God, I thank you for your love. That you first loved us. And in that is beauty. That you were so gracious to us. A broken people. Sinners in need of a savior. Running towards hell. But you intervened. And you loved us first. And in light of that love, that changed heart that you have given us, that you have shown us who you are, we then share that with others and love others. And as we love others, we remain more fully in you to experience your love. And so God, may we see this in your scripture here today. May we, um, as we continue to read through your word, find these deep truths that change us, that shape us, that mold us, that teach us the truth in our mind but that, Lord, our mind then flows into our heart to outpour the realities of what we know and what we believe, and that that would shape and change and mold us. So, God, we thank you, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right. Well, this is really cool. I'm excited to walk through these. Um, next video will be on prayer, and we'll just be working through these. So, thanks uh, for watching this. Um, I hope it is helpful and um, encouraging um, for you. So, we'll see you in the next video.